Howdy friends, welcome back to another campground review complete with accessible features. Today's destination is a very nice campground just north of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Lake Ray Roberts is just about an hour away from most of the Metroplex and offers three overnight camping areas. We're going to look at the Johnson Branch Campground today, which has some great camping sites, excellent mountain biking trails, and a huge concrete path that runs through the entire park, making exploration easy for everyone. I'll take you on a video tour of the campground and highlight the accessible campgrounds that don't show up on any other map. Let's saddle up and start exploring. Within the park, there are five camping areas, three or 10 only, and the Juniper Cove and Walnut areas have water and electricity. Bathrooms are in each area and playgrounds are scattered throughout. There's an excellent day use area we will explore as well. The Dogwood Canyon campsite area is a tent only area with most sites being walk-in. The Dallas Off-Road Bicycle Association has built miles of mountain biking trails with varying degrees of difficulty. As you enter the Juniper Cove loop, site number one is the designated ADA site. It is flat with a hard gravel drive and it's a covered picnic table, but very little shade. Site 11 is flat, has a great view of the lake, a wide back end driveway, but shade is very limited. Sites 15, 16, and 17 were some of our favorites. Lots of trees, flat driveways, and picnic areas, and a great view of this beautiful 29,000 acre lake. Johnson Creek doesn't fill up as fast as the Isle de Bois camping area, as it is a little further away from the major cities. All of the sites along this area have lots of shade, and are really big campsites. Site 17 is huge and includes a double wide driveway. Site number 20 was the one we stayed in it has the double wide drive and electricity. You can see our setup here. We mainly camp in the driveway area at the back of our trailer and the campsite. We had our solar panels out even though we had electricity because we were testing them. Let's hit the trails. The paved trail I'm on is a mixed use for walking, biking, or wheelchairing. It's a great way to wander through the forest and the path is relatively flat if you're thinking of using a manual wheelchair. I like it because I can use my Porta Mobility Ranger Quattro Pro because it can go up to 20 miles on the two standard batteries and I carry a third to give me an additional 10 miles. I was able to ride all the way to the day use area and back and it was a great trail with birds and critters and a little history along the way. I like bird watching and nature photography, so this path is plenty wide and goes through some pretty sections. Occasionally, I will venture off the paved path if I am with someone. Sometimes it's easier get getting down a path than it is coming back up, so I always have somebody spot me and make sure that the trail is safe and I don't get stuck. And then I'll come back later with the confidence of knowing that I can spend some time there enjoying the scenery or taking some pictures. made a few friends on this trip. And my portable mobility chair had no problem getting me back up this packed dirt and grass path.
As I drive down the concrete paths, I think of the people that came here before me. W.S. Peters with the Texas Immigration and Land Company promoted this area for settlement back in the 1840s. Most settlers came from Missouri, Arkansas, Alabama, and Tennessee and settled here because of the proximity to timber, water, and the abundant wildlife. This corral may have belonged to the Jackson Jones family who arrived in the late 1850s and lived in this area for 120 years until the land became a state park. Site 28 has a retaining wall and is a small site for an RV and the tent pad is up above the wall, but it has a great view across the road of the lake. It also has some good shade. Site 39 is a lot like Site 1, flat and accessible but very little shade and out by the roads. On our way to the Walnut Loop, I spotted a red-shouldered hawk up in a tree. They're easy to spot with their red chest and almost like a checkerboard black and white wings. I usually see them in pairs and sure enough, we caught the other one flying off down the road a few yards down. Walnut Campground has 64 sites with a lot of them being accessible. I'll highlight my favorites. Site 40 is the ADA site. It is flat and has a little wider driveway and unlike Site 1 in Juniper Cove. We found a trail behind Site 4 that went to the lake shore. You would need a chair like the Freedom Tracks to get there safely or have some assistance. Site 40, 45 was very nice. Tons of shade, a big site, a great view of the lake. 46 has a short drive, but it is super wide and has very flat with a view of the lake. You would need to move around to catch some shade for a whole day. Site 47 was also flat and had good shade and a path to the playground. Site 51 was scenic with shade, but it had a sh short wide driveway. Site 52 was a little sm smaller, but had a great view and a lot of shade. Site 63 had a long, wide drive with a big campsite and tons of shade. We drove to the day use area and it has a lot of parking and paved paths. It even had a pay phone, for nostalgia, I guess. Path to the fishing pond was dirt, but was accessible. And there was some wildlife there since there wasn't a crowd. Caught some rustling leaves and discovered a little mouse getting ready for winter. The day use area had a picnic area, a beach, and a playground.
Several of the picnic sites by the beach were paved. If you find yourself stuck indoors, I hope that you will uh, get a little inspiration by, by knowing that there's places you can go and have a great day, whether it's just to have a picnic, lunch out by the lake, or camp and spend the night, and see the stars, and be with your family. I really enjoy this park and uh, all of the concrete trails and plan on coming back uh, many times with my family, my grandkids, uh, as it is very accessible. With all the trails, even the path down to the sandy beach was accessible. And what a pretty beach it was. Further up the path, there were tent sites that had a paved walkway, which made them fairly accessible. As evening approached, we saw the buzzards calling it a day and heading to roost. Here is a map of the two main electric campground sites you won't find anywhere else. The dark blue purple sites are designated ADA sites. The light blue ones are ones equally flat and accessible. I'll put a copy of this map in the description, along with the spreadsheet. Our day of exploring was coming to an end, and we went back to camp to start some dinner. Fried potatoes and onions in a cast iron skillet, some sauteed mushrooms, and some modest ribeyes to cap off a full day. You have to bring your own firewood or purchase it at the park. That is always my favorite part of camping. I hope you enjoyed the tour. And if you have mobility issues, I especially hope that you can see there are a lot of great campsites that are close to home. So get out and enjoy the fresh air, the wildlife, and the stars. Until next time, it's time for us to hit the trail like a cow patty. So be safe in your travels and so long.